Dwarf, Save the Victor Wall. How's everybody doing today? Amazing, I hope. Today it's time for a little hair, hats, chats, and playing with the Nomad Com Cosmetics Home for the Holiday palette to get this fun look. One on each eye, because I have two eyes, so why not? So if that's something you're into, you want to see me play a little bit with hair, play with some makeup, chat about how my no buy low buy is going, and check out some vintage hats, you're in the right place. And you need to keep on watching. <laughs> Okay, here we are. Today we are going to do hair, hats, makeup, and chats. I think that is going to be today's vibe. It's been a week into my no buy, low buy, budget buy, and project pan. So we can do a little bit of updates on that and how things are going while playing with the Nomad Home for the Holidays. Okay, so this palette was limited edition. It looks to be no longer available, but in case you were just kind of curious about it, to see a palette of almost all shimmers by Nomad Cosmetics to see how it works, if you were just interested in the brand, and um, I thought we would play with it. So look at this beautiful sparkly packaging. And then on the back, it's got a little bit Nomad, Home for the Holidays. It was limited edition. And then it also came in this cute packaging. And then inside it had cute little design, really nice packaging all together. Then you open it up, it has a mirror, which I will leave covered. And then instead of your typical plastic, it has just a piece of this nice white paper almost like tissue paper, which I think I like better than plastic. <laughs> and this is the color story here. So it's got one black matte, which is awesome. If you're going to do these beautiful shimmers, I think black is a way to go. And here are the colors here. So I will insert some swatches, but um, yeah, so I think what I'm going to do on one eye, we're going to do a regular primer, and then we're gonna do some of the darker colors that may not need a little bit of help. And then we're gonna use maybe a dark eye primer and the black, and then we're gonna use some of the other lighter shadows and see how it works on a black base. I hope that's, if that's like a good plan, I hope. And then once we've got an eye look together, then I'm going to unroll my hair. See, I haven't done a hair roll in a while. I slept in them overnight and then I worked in them today. So I just have some pillow rollers and then because I cut my hair into a bob, so I'm getting ready to put it back into my midi, which is a vintage haircut. Um, I also have a few small other rollers to catch some of the hair and then I think still a few slipped out. But we're gonna see what we can do. We're gonna see what we can do and then I, <laughs> okay, so I sort of kind of did break my no buy it for hats. <laughs> Uh, I was out with friends for lunch and we had seen each other for a bit and then we we're doing some shopping and I was doing really good. Nothing in the record store, nothing in the vintage furniture store and then my friend was still busy in the record store my other friend was like let's go to the vintage clothing store across the street and I found some 1930s hats so okay but and then for makeup, I did spend my allowance so far for the month. It is only because Lethal Cosmetics, which is on my list, released a four limited edition eyeshadows where they were donating the money or the proceeds to animal charity. So I think that is really great. So I had to get them. And plus it was on my list. And I just decided, because I was going to do $50 Canadian plus shipping, I included the shipping in this and I just didn't quite cap out my allowance, but with the shipping, it was still slightly under my allowance. So that's really good for January. You know, January, there's always going to be some kind of release surprise. There were two last year with the Kaleidos and the Angela Nyquist. And then there was the awesome um, Odin's Eye collection last January. So the Norns. So, so far it's been good. Nothing too temptation except for four single eyeshadows. So I think we're doing 
good. So then I thought we could model one of the hats, maybe both, but I think just the one that I think may go with the look, with my hair look, but we will go on from there. And then I've been using all my project pan products and I've been doing really well with them. So I think my foundation is going to be done. Maybe another couple uses. I'm really having to shake and hold it upside down to get anything out. So I think that's going to go. I've got some lip products that'll definitely be done. I've been really focusing on these, this cream blush by Stila. So I'm hoping by the end of the month that will be used too. So I think putting this concerted effort into panning some products that I've been sitting on for a while was the right idea for me. And then I left my eye primer. Oh no, here it is. I thought I left my eye primer brush in the other bag. Oh, and this one has some black still on there. So that's no good. Abort. Abort. All right. So let's see. Well, okay. Maybe what we'll do. No, let's see if I can get a lot of this off. And then, yeah. So did I get all, most of this off? I did. Okay. So then I'll just take a little bit more of when I'm panning it too. So if I waste a little bit, oops, <laughs> a little bit of my Kaleidos Tone Activated Primer. There we go. Yeah, my friends and I met up for lunch on Sunday, one of our favorite restaurants, which is called Meat. They went and posted that they had a limited edition thing item on their menu and it was the last day on Sunday and it included deep fried pickles. So we were on it, let me tell you. So we so we decided to do an impromptu meetup if the weather behaved. And at first it was a bit scary because it started to snow again on Saturday, but then by the afternoon it started to rain. So the roads were definitely clear enough for me to go out and about without it being dangerous to me or anybody else. All right, so we've got a little bit of the Kaleidos on there. So we are going to go and use some of the darker shimmers on here. And then I think maybe we can try it in kind of like a rainbow fashion to try and use a few of the colors. So I'm gonna take this flat brush here. I didn't bring my shimmer spray. Oh, well, we're gonna do it without spraying it then. Okay, so we've got, so let's see, so the darker colors seem to be We've got a red, a blue, and a purple. Well, even the greens, I would say these five are the darker and then we've got the lighter ones. So maybe what we can do is I can go purple, blue, and green maybe? Yeah, let's do that. So we're gonna start in the outer corner. We're gonna do a little bit of the purple color and that one is called Jack. So that's that shimmer there. So we're gonna go into Jack. Hopefully we don't have any fallout. These are soft, but not super soft where they start kicking up a lot, which I really like. So let's just go and pop some of that on there. So that's really pretty so far. So that's a look at our purple shimmer. I think that is super nice. I really like their shimmers. They last all day. Um, I wore actually wore this yesterday with a black base and then I used a couple of the colors. It stayed nice and smooth all day. I have to admit I wore it for quite a long time, though that by the end it was separating a little bit, but I'm thinking it had to do with the black primer I had underneath because I've never had that problem with Nomad um, shimmers using my regular base. So I'm thinking that that may have been it or just for the fact that I wore it for like 12 hours. <laughs> so there we go. So then we've got that purple shade there. So that goes on really nicely. Got some good color payoff. It's beautiful and shiny and it goes nicely onto a lighter base. So it doesn't need a dark base to um, show it's pretty sure. And then we're gonna go into this blue and then this one is called Buzz. So it's on the bottom there. So we're gonna do that for the next strip of color. Let's get a good amount on our brush. I was gonna run out afterwards to Walmart, but I talked myself out of it. So I'll probably go tomorrow instead. I thought I wanted to go 
I can just relax and film and then edit and get this up without worrying about having to go out or being out before it gets too dark or too slick out because it's been a bit wet today and then plus you know with the ice and the snow it may get a little slippery when it gets starts to get cooler again uh, maybe i don't want to go out into that so there is the blue there and then you can see it goes on really nicely do like almost like a little rainbow and then the next color we're going to go in into the green one i'm just going to use the same brush it comes off nicely on the color switch and then we're going to go into the shade oh i cannot read that Hold on. it's a little shiny this one is oh fur babies so the green one there and fur babies so that's going to be the next shade Okay, this one has a little bit more kick up than the purple and the blue does. So let me just grab that onto the brush and then let's do the next part as fur babies. Yeah, I think this palette will definitely go along with other, nicely blend with other palettes. Especially if you have a lot of neutral palettes and you just want some pops of color, this will be the perfect pop of color shimmer palette. So nice. Before I get too far, I'm just going to go take a fluffy brush and I'm just going to quickly blend just along the top a little bit. Just to make the edges smooth. There we go. So for the final color, should we do red or should we do yellow? I mean yellow would look really good with the green and then red this is a Christmas palette it would give you more of a Christmas look but I think because you I like lighter on the inner corner let's go with the yellow shade and that one is called is that called family? Family yeah so and that is the yellow shade there and then who doesn't like a good yellow? So let's see how that yellow works on the eyeball. Gorgeous. Great choice. Yes. Yellow. There we go. So now we have a beautiful shimmery rainbow on one eye. So that is just using the regular tone activated primer. That looks really good. So these br more vibrant, vibrant colors um, that are a little bit darker, more almost jewel toned, they don't need a dark base. They go really nicely on a lighter base. I, they probably all do, but um, if you want a little bit more intense, I think you want to do a black base. So I think that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to use my Prime is Everything by The Bomb. I really like this black primer and as you tell I got a huge humongous divot in the bottom there. Um, I could almost put that in the project pan because I think that's going to go pretty soon. And then we're going to do that on the other eye. But when I tried this yesterday I used this one and it was a little bit too big for my eye for doing something like this if I didn't want it all the way up to my brow bone. So I'm going to take a smaller brush here. Yeah, let's take this one. So I like to use a bit of a denser brush and then I'm going to go into here and then let's put on a black base. And then I don't want to go too high because again I don't like it for myself when my when my eyelet goes too high I like it just to go just past the mobile lid so that um, if I would have my eyes all the way open you can still see more color from looking down right you can still see color so I don't like it too much I keep wanting to go to my other eye and then what I'm going to oh, that was smart mm -hmm. yeah smart no, we do not need black primer on my under eye. I want to highlight your under eye, not darken your under eye. 
All right, so there we go. We've got our primer on, and then I'm going to put on first a little bit of extra darkness on the edge. I'm going to do a little bit of the black eyeliner, that eyeliner, eyeshadow that's in here. I'm just going to take a little angled brush, and then I'm going to go into this black shade, and it is called Dusty. <laughs> So that's Dusty there, which is the black matte. It's the only matte in the palette. Okay, so, because I did my eyes first the other day instead of my base, this has a lot of fallout, so be very careful with the black. So you'll definitely want to do your eyes first if you're going to use this black, but it is, as you can see, very intense, especially over this black primer. It goes on really dark. So I'm going to see if there's a way that I can gently, I can gently get this off without making too much of a mess. Yeah, luckily I'm not going anywhere. Okay, we'll fix this after. Let's just finish up here. So yeah, if you're gonna use this black, as you can tell, I've got it all over there to <laughs> don't do your base first. Alrighty, so next, Let's, should we go, so we did the yellow, so we did, well now we've done four of the shades. So why don't I do go from the red, which is Friends, we'll start with that, and then we'll go into Kaiser, which is this orangey color, I think. All right, so let's try Friends. Again, I'm gonna use that flat brush that I used before. We're going to do this. On the wing. Look at that. Wow. Okay, so my camera is going to shut off. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to take advantage of that. That's so beautiful. I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to go clean up this black mess on my face and then we can come back and work on the other colors. So for you, it'll be like two seconds. So two seconds. So usually if I want a nice shimmery red, I've been using from Bitter Lace Beauty, I have a red just be highlighter, like a vampire-y highlighter and it goes on and I usually use that when I want a vibrant red. So now I have another one that I can use in its place. Look how nice that is, hey? Alrighty, so we've got ourselves the red, and then, or should we go peak? Maybe we'll go peak, pink, <laughs> and then peach. Mixture of peach and pink. <laughs> All right, so let's see if I can get that off. Yeah, so yeah, so let's go into the pink instead. So we're gonna go from red to pink. So we're gonna go into Shadoa which is that shade there. And then we will go into, into Kaiser. I think that's what we're gonna do. So let's just go into the pink. There we go. This is nice. it's, again, it's nice and soft, so you wanna be careful. I'm actually going to spray this one a little bit. So either I went in there too hard or it's a little bit softer than some of the other ones. So now let's do the pink. Okay, that one looks like it's going to need another coat to go over the black. May have sprayed it a little bit too much, maybe. But now that my brush is still damp, let's see how that does. Yeah, so I think by the end of the month, I will 100% have used a spray, um, a foundation, a blush,
I'm actually kind of enjoying using my products. I had fun the first um, palette that I picked for the year was my first ever Kaleidos, Kaleidos, my first ever Juvia's Place palette, um, the Zulu palette, and that leads me into the palette that I'm going to be using this week, other than this eye look, is Kaleidos. So hence the um, slip up. I'm going to go into the first Kaleidos palette that I ever got. And this is, I believe, Futurism 5? Yes, Electro Turquoise. And it is this beautiful color story here. So since I've been buying some other Kaleidos ones recently, I haven't played with this one as much as I like to. But I really, really love this green. So there's a nice little divot going on in there and in that shimmer. So I'm definitely going to try and see how many looks I can create this week with this cute little palette. Alrighty. So that's how the pink is looking. That's really nice. There we go. And then the next shade we're going to go into is that shade Kaiser. So that was the peachy shade. And then, okay, this one is a little bit more firm. These are all like soft, so you have to be careful not to dig, but a few are softer than other ones. So this one is a little bit firmer pressed, but really nice. All right, and then let's do orange. I think we're going to do the white for inner corners. I think that's what we're going to do now. So here's the peachy shade. Okay, I didn't spray the brush, so it's not coming up a lot. So let me try. Could also be because it's a dark back um, base. It could be that this particular um, shade definitely needs a lighter. Yeah, I think the peach one definitely would go better on um, the Kaleidos lighter base than on the black base so far as what it's seeming here. But let's again take a little bit more. It just might need to be packed on a little bit. Let's try pack it on with our finger. There we go, and I'm seeing a little, definitely a bit more payoff there when I do that. So let's just take our finger for some more. Okay, the peach one is definitely one that you'd want to use your finger or use one of those foamy little spatula ones, I think that would go really well. So the only thing I'm gonna do now for that middle is I'm going to add a bit of the pink because I think the peach is take, I went a little bit over into the, into the pink realm. So let's just move a little bit there. So what are we thinking? Cute, right? And then, oops, and then let's just into the Blend, I guess. I'm gonna straighten the I'm just straightening the edge out here where I have the primer. Oh I like that. So I'll have to take some pictures after. Yeah, I like that. So that is that. So now let's just quickly do our last thing. And then this way we've used every color in this palette. We're gonna go into Evander, which is this white shimmer here. And then it looks like it's iridescent. So we're gonna go and put some of that on our brush. Like so, and then we're gonna spray a little. And then let's see how that looks as an inner corner. Ooh, it goes great as an inner corner. Wow, that's a lot of bling. Wow, this is really pretty. I like it. There we go. So here we are. So here's our Nomad palette 
home for the holidays. So let's take, I'm gonna put that tissue back on. And then there is our beautiful color story there. I like it. All right, so we're gonna go and put on a little mascara. And if you watched my last few videos, I have been liking to use this one from Wet n Wild, though it looks purple, nothing really shows, but it really spreads the lashes beautifully. I mean, it gives a little bit of color, but not as much as I had hoped. And so I'm definitely keeping that little brush. And then a little bit of our Elf Bake Moo. This is my second one. I really like this one. And then I'm gonna go back to my Essence one because I have one to use. And then I'm gonna decide if I'm gonna keep doing Essence or I'm gonna keep doing the Elf one. And I decided not to do a lower lash line today. I normally feel naked without it, but I think with this being an all shimmer, and the colors being so bright and pretty, I didn't want to put a black underneath. Alrighty, so I'm going to go put this makeup portion away and then we can maybe do a little bit of hair together. We'll see how it goes. So if it's edited out, it didn't go as well as I thought, but we're going to see. Okay, we'll be back in a second. Okay, so we've made some space on our desk. So now we can go about taking these out. So just my little scarf to wrap my hair and then I just have my little pillow rollers. Like I said I put in, side there we go, put in a few of the other rollers because some of the hair was a little bit too short. So that's what we did and then the rollers that I like to use are the rockin rollers and then you can get that from vintagehairstyling.com. Um, she's absolutely fantastic um, yeah it comes with a little a little book so the creator does some beautiful different hair stuff yeah she, uh, Lauren Reynolds has a book as a book um, the definitive kind of book on vintage hairstyling um, she does makeup and hair for people as well she did that once for me in a photo shoot yeah, so I, every time I go to Viva, I usually stock up. She has um, my favorite hair setting spray, and then just like um, brushes and all sorts of supplies. And she's based out of Colorado, so when I'm in Colorado visiting some of my other pals, we usually try to see if she can let us come to her warehouse so I can buy all the things. <laughs> um, shipping to Canada is a lot, which is not her fault, but so that's why I wait till Viva or um, when I go to Colorado, which I've been, of course, able to do for a few years. So then we'll have to see how this held. Because usually if I have my um, midi cut, things hold a lot better. But that's okay and then and then also in the winter I find that if the weather is too wet so um, early spring and winter um, if I go outside unless I have the super tightest of um, curl sets um, the, my hair doesn't stay because I have very baby fine hair so it will it'll get frizzy and wonky and won't stay. <laughs> so when it comes to my hair, I definitely like it better in the summertime because because with it being less damp out, curls stay in my hair a lot longer. And then so do sets. Sometimes sets will last a couple days. But uh, so far it's doing okay. And then since I've had this cut, I think I curled it once and then I left the house and it was really windy and damp and it didn't last very long. But I'm not going anywhere today. I think I got them all. And then usually I use, I have a Denman brush. I usually have one for my purse. I have an extra one and I have one in my bathroom. I love these. Um, Sally's Beauty used to carry them, but the last little while I've not seen them there. So the last time I was in Colorado, I snagged up an extra one of these. So I'm just gonna get my other mirror because looking in the camera is kind of weird. So I'm just gonna go and, whoops, I still, I still have one in there. That happens all the time too. 
And then if I have a firmer set, I can brush and brush and brush and brush, and then it doesn't take it, and the curls will last. But if my hair, if it's like this where it's really soft, then I try not to brush it too much because then all the curls will unfortunately fall out because baby fine hair and it's not quite the right cut. And I find cur um, the, for me, pillow curlers go a little bit better when I have slightly longer hair, but this is not too bad. Yay me. So I'm just going to do it very simply. Go. Oh, I miss having my vintage hair all the time. I need to get back into that. Let's curl up the back. I really like um, 1920s, 30s hair. I used to, do, used to do a lot more victory rolls and more 1940s style hair. Victor, when it came to, I guess, 40s hair, like the victory roll type stuff, I was really good. The, you know, those beautiful, wavy with hair underneath. I can never get my hair to do, do that, or I've never quite figured out how to do it. So I usually stick to stuff that's pretty simple. I think that's what I'm going to do today. And then we're gonna play with a couple hats. Oops, hold on, what's going on here? There we go. My helmet. There we go. So it's really easy peasy. So like I said, if I have light curls in there, I try not to brush them too much. If I have, uh, if they're really really tight, then I can brush and brush and brush, and then I can either get them to smooth or have super super curly wavy. Um, then I can either make big swoops if I want. I can just put pins in and swoop, swoop up the hair. All right, swooping a little bit all right there. Hey, look at that. I didn't even put, I have to put a pin in it. All right, so uh, there we go. So I didn't need any of that. And then this just quick. I've got a few hairs that are hanging because a few didn't stick in, but I'm not gonna be too fussed about it right now. But it's so weird looking in a you flip into the camera to do hair. All right, that's better. Alrighty, let me go get my hat box with a couple of hats. Hold on one second. All right, so um, the lovely lady at Woo Vintage actually gave me one a hat box to stick them in. So from originally, I guess, from a store called The Room. <laughs> so anyways, because um, sometimes finding vintage hat boxes, they're either really expensive, um, or people aren't selling them. This one is in a little rough shape, but I can, from the inside, do something, or like like she was suggesting, decoupage it. But I do like when, you know, they've been loved. They've been, they've been used, right? So it's awesome. So I was very happy that she did that. So I picked up two hats when I got there. This one is a 1930s, possibly 1940s hat, but it is definitely, um, the kind of pixie hat style, which I believe the 1930s, but there we go. I loved it because it had a little olives on them. This one is missing its pimento, but it's this cute hat. So technically, you usually find the label. It doesn't have a label in there, but it does have where it is um, sewn together there. So I would think that would technically be the back, but however vintage hats look, wear them. So I'll just try this one on first. And then we will just do it as it's supposed as it's supposed to be, as if the label was in back. How cute is this? Let's back up. Right. But when I was playing with the hat, it was like, I wonder what it would look like if it had the olives up front. Just for fun. And I think that looked almost better that way. Even the lady in the store was like, oh my gosh. So I showed it to my friend and he was like, I think that if you wear the olive, something that's totally the olive color, having these up front would totally be the way to go. So I'm wearing um, my Petty University <laughs> shirt, so not very vintage today, and that way. And then if I was wearing any other color, so like the hat is brown and olive, it has this beautiful velvet trim on it, that maybe if I wore other colors that I could 
wear it like so, this little pixie hat. So it's a size small. Um, I have pretty, I have a pretty small head, so I can wear a, a good chunk of vintage hats. I'm still trying to get um, an original 1920 or 1930s cloche that fits like a cloche is supposed to, but so far I haven't found one, so I always say to fit my big head. But in vintage hats, I'm usually pretty lucky and I can fit into a lot of them. So that's that one. And then the next one I got, so there wasn't a year on it, but it's definitely kind of the um, Tyrone Powers era. So if you like film noir, oh, see I'm already mixing, messing my hair. So you usually do your hair, put your hat on and you leave it on. <laughs> so anyways, so this is like, if you're thinking kind of film noir from the 30s or even the 40s, I've got to this hat here, look how beautiful. And then it's got these beautiful feathers and it's kind of like this rope detailing. And then this one does have a label in it and it's um, Emmanuel Gittel. So I'd have to go and look them up. So it may not be vintage, but it's definitely vintage styled. And then it has like a little bow in the back to kind of tell you where it sits. And it has their emblem in back here. It's nicely lined. It's in really good shape. So then if I pop this on my head, I like to have it sit like this. So there we go. Oh, I'm running out of battery. So we're getting near our end here. But there we go. So then here, like I said, it's more like if you watch like Tyrone Powers movies or film noir. Oh, there we go. So there we go. So we, uh, we have a little bit of hair, a little bit of hat, a little bit of makeup, and a little bit of chat. So that's us for today. So if you like this video, give us a like, comment, and subscribe, or maybe even hit that notification bell. If not, that's okay. We can still be friends. We can still play with makeup, chat, and play with hats. So that's it for me. Have a fantastic day, and we will see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.